Hello YouTube, and thank you for joining me today. The year was 1982. I was attending high school. This was a great year. Movies like Tron, Blade Runner, The Thing, Pink Floyd's The Wall, and Fast Times at Richmond High were some of the popular flicks. Music like Abracadabra, Let It Whip, I Can't Go For That, and Eye in the Sky was being played on the radio. However, our story takes place on a Friday. Time for another pep assembly. Now, during those days, selected band members would meet at 6.15 a.m. Soon after all were accounted for, warm-up was completed, and my rowdy classmates settled down, we lined up in the hallway, all decked out in our band t-shirts. We were prepared to march around several floors, performing with spirit the school's fight song. This was our way of contributing to the efforts of the sports department. It also was a jump start to what would surely prove to be an active pep assembly later that day. After receiving final instruction from our band teacher, it hit me. It was as if I never saw this image before. It was our school mascot, a graphic depiction of a Native American Indian. It was centered and proudly displayed on the t-shirt in solid black. It was also on our walls in the hallway. However, the t-shirt that it was displayed on that I was focused on had an orange background, so it definitely demanded your attention. Why are we using a symbol that represented a group of people? Why did we link this to our school and the sports team? I realized after a superficial conversation with several people that there was no historical significance other than some deciding to use it. Then I started to wonder what would happen if I substituted a white, black, or Asian person on the t-shirt. Would everyone be good with this? I questioned several of my classmates, normally receiving one of two popular answers. Either a reply that followed indifference, normally followed by a verbal chaser, also a question, like, why are you asking such a stupid question? I knew the question was far from stupid, so I continued asking and received what proved to be the other popular answer. Hell no! My people are not for your amusement or fuck off. Then it hit me. It really hit me. The majority were not concerned with a Native American Indian on the t-shirt, only a member of their group, or they showed little concern. They hip Hypocrisy was dripping off of all of us. I soon divorced myself from the majority. If it was not okay for their or my group to be depicted as a symbol for someone else's pride, then how could it be okay if it was a Native American? My young mind stressed it was especially not kosher since the institution was not legitimately invested in the culture or any Native American Indian group. I knew I had to do something about it. I was labeled the troublemaker and a host of other unsavory titles. This did not keep me, however, from doing what I was convinced was right. So if a teenager can figure this out, then why were the adults struggling with this? This question visited me frequently in the weeks to come. What it came down to was this, most were insensitive jerks that simply did not care, unless it was a major influence in shaping their reality in an unfavorable way, made them think about their behavior, or required change and possibly an apology. So then I invested my time in research and realized that others were also not pleased. Let's take a trip down my childhood now, okay? As a child, I was excited about eating at any fast food restaurant, even one named Sambo. 
This was before I knew of the word. My mom never took me, but eventually I went with others. Then I realized that the word Sambo was used as a racial slur. Later learning it gained popularity as a racial slur in the late 30s. Well, later I learned that the word Sambo was an amalgam of Sam and Bo, taken from the names of the founders of the eating establishment. Unfortunately, as part of their marketing strategy, the founders used a logo based on a children's story called Little Black Sambo. For those who do not know, Helen Bannerman, a Scottish woman, wrote the work back in 1899. It takes place in India. It is a story about a little boy who goes into the jungle and loses his clothes to bullying tigers. Now the tigers, not too smart, chase each other around the tree and eventually melts into butter. Yeah, butter. Which Sambo puts on his pancakes and eats. Kind of twisted if you ask me. Anyway, the founders thought it was perfect because of the amalgam and the fact that pancakes were one of the restaurant's specialties. However, like the attitude of the antebellum South, the word Sambo was a depiction of people from African descent as childlike. It linked our image to those who showed lack of care for any consequence in life, any. It promoted that we would not fully develop into mature adult human beings. This is the watered down version, polite version. Now, I believe the founders of the restaurant was innocent of any wrongdoing, nor do I think that they were engaged in any active racism. They were only attempting to capitalize off of the situation. If they were guilty of anything, they were guilty only of, and this is my opinion, of not thinking deeply. Maybe not understanding various symbols or popular culture and advancing with that particular meme. As a side note, if people from India en masse found the name offensive and I was the owner, I would remove it. I would have removed it if blacks were offended, but I do not remember there ever being a movement during my childhood uh, to get that name altered. It is important to understand the name and the original logo depicted a character that was not created by a resident of India, yet it was symbolic of a person from India, though it looked like a representation of a black individual. So, you guessed it. I do not think it is appropriate for businesses or other institutions to use people, minority or not, as mascots for corporate symbols. Now let's shoot from the hip. If a mascot is not favorably seen by a sizable number of the representative group or groups, then this should present a red flag in your mind. Their culture and history is being impacted by its use. Therefore, their voice should be honored. Oh, it is so not about you, Washington Redskins. How offensive is that word? You wouldn't say Washington niggers. No, you wouldn't. Or you wouldn't say Washington crackers. And though you may be laughing at this, there's nothing to laugh about. As individuals that may be intimately connected to a group who uses these demeaning images or names. It does not matter if you admire the heroism of reported battles. It does not matter if you have a great respect for certain Native American tribes. You do not have to be a member of the National Congress of American Indians to understand why they and other natives seek to eliminate negative stereotyping of them by the media or corporations. If you do not think this is a big issue for the principle alone, then maybe a numerical representation will drive it home. 
According to the National Coalition on Racism in Sports and the Media, there are nearly 3,000 sports teams in the United States with mascots of an Indian theme. Still not sold? Okay, listen closely. When we use others as mascots, we are abandoning the shield of impulse and haphazard actions. So, there is nothing that we can hide behind here. We are adopting a systematic method of attaching depictions of that group to commercial enterprises, products, or ventures. These corporations tell the world they have entitlement to depict another's nationality, race, religion, or ethnicity. They are even dishonest in not honoring the reciprocating prospect of commerce. They do not have the right to design depictions that demean another and profit by its use. Yet, send a big middle finger to anyone who opposes this sickening prospect. Every group in corporate America that participates does not deserve our support. Let it be known, if you communicate to me justifications for how it is supposedly okay or good to ignore the majority of the group and continue to exploit them with inappropriate, disrespectful, or stereotypical methods, well, you need to unsubscribe. I am not interested in your participation on my channel. No, no, it is not about forcing you to agree with me. It is a matter of principle, and frankly, I understand that anyone can view my videos. However, I am not making these videos for the likes of you, if you are okay with this world view. Why such a strong position? Well, I have constructed several videos in regards to racism, and though racism may be a motivating factor here, I think that there is something even more evil lurking in the shadows. And what could that be? Well, let's think about it. I am not in the business of reducing an individual from the status of a person to a mascot. When you turn a blind eye, what you are communicating to those who are using these mascots is that it is okay to participate in the reduction, the reduction of humanity. Yes, it is okay to treat a member of the human family with this degree of callousness. It is not appropriate to designate the Native American Indians as the unfortunate recipients of this systematic reduction of personhood. Reduction of personhood. At least when we are considering racism, we do acknowledge that there is a type of reduction that has to occur for an individual to see themselves as superior to another individual, but even if we are to reduce the individual to a subhuman, we are still at a subhuman level. When we further that degree of reduction to a level of inanimate object, then we have hit an all-time low. Now, this is not a contest. Both positions are deplorable and only shows the worst in humankind. As I had stated earlier, one, racism may be a motivating factor that encourages this action, but not necessarily. It could simply be greed, ignorance, or many other things. Let's not get hung up on this racism thing at this time, because that is not the focus. Focus on how pathetic it speaks of our United States of America, that we allow our corporations to reduce people to a mascot. If you feel as I do, please contact these organizations. Contact 
various Indian groups in your community and ask if they have an organized campaign to fight this. If so, join. If no, then ask why. Understand, if even from a selfish position, that if it can happen to one group, it can happen to another. Why does this matter, you ask? Injustice is not something which becomes important when it happens to you, someone you care about, or your particular group of interest. It is not just about you. If we are numb to injustice specifically aimed at another group, then we have little hope as a human family. Think carefully about this. Thank you for your time.